Hi guys, this is a free lesson on curve sketching. Um, so in this example, this will probably take us a little while to get through. I'm gonna give you full details of the process. I've chosen an example that will really kind of show all of the details that go into this. So this will be a little bit longer, but you should really understand the process when this is over. Um, so before we get started, if you just wanna do me a solid, maybe consider liking my video or subscribing to my channel, sharing it with your friends or leaving me a comment. Um, that just really helps me and supports putting free math on the internet. It's kind of my goal to have as much free math instruction as possible. All right, so before we get started, you should have several sheets of paper in front of you if you are really trying to learn this. This is a very paper intensive process. So just a warning on that. And with this video, you're gonna to wanna to take notes and pause this video when you need to stop it to take the notes. The curve sketching process, it's just a lot of stuff that goes into it. So you're gonna be best served by this video if you actually kind of engage and take notes, pause, make the video work for you. All right, so I've chosen this example, f of x equals x squared plus two over two x. So I'm gonna outline all of the steps for this. Just a FYI, if you watch like 10 other YouTube videos um, by other people, people probably have different ways of going through this. I'm just going to kind of show you the way that it makes the most sense to me. And then if you find other videos and they talk about something different, I mean, that's, that's, that's okay. There's, there's more than one order to kind of do this in. Okay. So before you get started with this, the first thing that you want to do is determine the domain and any symmetry. So again, I would write this down if I were you and maybe consider pausing the video and just looking at this and writing down what you think the domain and the symmetry are. And then I'll show you once you hit play. Okay, so the domain, it's all real numbers except for zero, right? So you just can't have a zero in the denominator here. So if I plug in zero, that'll make the denominator equal zero. So I wrote it like this, or if you wanna have that in interval notation, there it is for you right there. So there's the domain. And then for the symmetry, so to add that in, so for symmetry, um, what you've gotta do is you've gotta evaluate f of negative x and plug that into this. So if I plug just negative x in, what does this end up becoming? Well, I end up getting really x squared plus two over negative two x. And so what that means then, if I wanted to actually write this out, so I get the negative version of this function. So what that means is then we have something that's odd and that's because, I'll just write bc here, f of negative x equals negative f of x. So you really want to know these two things before you get started because you're kind of ruling out things like maximum or minimum. And then also you're trying to determine a sketch of what the graph is going to look like. There is symmetry here. So this is going to kind of govern what our, our final product's going to look like. So this is very important to know. The next thing is to determine any asymptotes. So I've seen some books that just suggest you do this at the end. I personally just like to know what my asymptotes are at the beginning because then I, I won't accidentally call them a max or a min. Um, so this just kind of, again, helps me kind of govern all the decisions that I've got to make about this. So in looking at this, um, the, the asymptote that we're going to have is, so we're obviously going to have one at zero, so at x equals zero. So there is an asymptote at x equals zero. And then the other one that's very important is now you've got to take the, this is a rational expression. So you need to take the limit of this as x approaches infinity. So the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x. So if you look at this, so the highest exponent is x squared and that's on top. So what that's telling you is that the top is going to grow a lot faster than the bottom. So the limit of this as x goes to infinity is actually just gonna equal infinity. So we don't have like a nice um, horizontal asymptote we, um, in this case. But because this is a rational expression, uh, we are going to have definitely an oblique asymptote. So we need to find the oblique asymptote. Now, I think what I'm gonna do is make a, a second video on how to do this. I'm, I'm gonna give you a quick overview of this but I will include a link in the comments if you just have no idea what I'm doing in this next part. I've got your back. Um, I'll have a link in the comments of just another video you can watch and, and we'll do it that way. 
So to do this, what I really need to do is just, I, I'll do some long division on this polynomial. Um, so I'm going to divide the denominator into the top. And so if you do this, so how many times do you multiply 2x to get to x squared? Or what do you have to multiply 2x by to get to x squared? Well, that would be 1 half x. And then you multiply that together and subtract it off. Oops, and this will be minus x squared. And so then you would bring, so this is 0. You bring down the 2. 2x won't go into 2, so this would be a, a remainder. And you discard this, actually. You don't, you don't care about this. So this we don't care about for, for our purposes. This here, this part here, is actually going to be my oblique asymptote. So I'll write that as OA. So in summarizing that then, I'll just write here, so my oblique asymptote is y equals 1 half x. So this will be very helpful later on, and just getting this work done before we do anything else is going to be a really good idea. So um, we've got a good start here. The next thing that we want to do is find the first and second derivatives of our functions. This will just kind of make our lives easier. And this, this is going to take us a little bit of work. So I want you to go ahead and find, let's start with just the first derivative. And it's very important that you simplify it as much as possible. So pause the video, go ahead and find the first derivative, hit play when you're ready to see the answer. So, okay, I'm going to have to use um, the quotient rule here. So if I work this out, here would be my derivative, all the pieces of it. And from here, now what I need to do is just kind of slug, slog through the algebra to figure out what the most simplified form of this is. So I'll, I'll write down all the steps for you. So we get to this point, and then notice everything's divisible by 2. So I'll just um, divide everything by 2 to get x squared minus 2 over 2x squared. So there's my first derivative, um, so I will note that in, in a little bit. Um, now what I want to do is I want to find the second derivative. So hopefully you've written all of this down. Again, pause the video if you need to write any of this work or check your work or, or whatever. Like, you've got to make these videos work for you, right? So um, now we need to take the derivative of this. So now what I want you to do is pause the video, find the second derivative, hit play when you're ready to see the answer. All right, and I'll, I'll get this party started here. So I'll start writing this out. And so now, once again, we just want to work this out as far as we possibly can to the most simplified form. So I'll show you all the steps. OK, and so there's my second derivative. So once again, if you need to check your work or whatever, pause the video, write all this down. Make sure you've got all this detail. So as you can see, this, this can take a lot of work just to find the first and second derivative. And it's really going to be worth it for you to try to put these in the most simplified form for the next steps. So what I want to do here is just write down um, what these two derivatives are, just as a summary. Okay, and now we can go on to the next step. So next I want to find any critical points. So now I've got to set my first derivative. Let's just take the, the first derivative. This was x squared minus 2 over... 2x squared. So if I set this equal to 0, so this will equal 0 when x equals really plus or minus the square root of 2. And just for our reference here, the square root of 2, just so that I know what the decimal is, this is plus or minus 1.414 and so on. So there's one critical point and then another critical point is um, this, this does not exist. So we know this does not exist at x equals 0, but the thing I just want to note, note here, so this cannot be a maximum, right? So that's why we do all that work in the beginning. We already know that this is an asymptote, so maybe I just want to note that. So it's up to you whether or not you want to actually note this. Sometimes what I notice is, is people plow through this process and they just say, oh, and, and then they try to make a conclusion whether or not this is a max or min. You have to really kind of keep all of these details straight. It's a lot. So constantly reminding yourself, like, this can't be a max or min is very important. So now that I've found all my critical points, um, now what I want to do is I want to determine any intervals of increasing or decreasing or max or min. So let's go to the next step. So here I'm, I'm really going to be using the first derivative test. Um, so I'm going to 
make a table of my increasing and decreasing at any max or min. So I'm assuming you already understand how the first derivative test works. If you don't, I have a lot of videos on this process and I would highly recommend that you've mastered this before you start this. Um, so I'll drop some links to that in the um, description. Okay, so what I want you to do here is pause the video and create the table for this and make all your conclusions and any max and min and all that stuff and then just hit play when you wanna see the answer. Okay, so first let me just get the table down. And now what I need to do is just determine the sign, the sign of each, oh, oh, the sign of f prime in each interval. So I'm going to omit all the work for that, but I'll just show you what the actual signs would be. So this will be positive, this will be negative, this will be negative, and this will be positive. So that's what you should have gotten. Um, and then remember, this is an asymptote. So I'll just write asymptote there so I can't mark that as anything. And now to call my max and min. So this goes from positive to negative. So what this means is I have a max here, and then here I have a min here. So again, if this is all Greek to you, um, then you might want to just go back and watch the video on this. I've explained this in a lot of detail, so you really wanna make sure you've mastered this before you try this. So now I can just summarize for myself. So, Notice that I've noted actually what the coordinate is, so I plug this back into our original function up here. And now I just know what these points are. I need to know these actual points because I'm going to have to put them on my graph later. So you do want to go through this work. Okay, so that covers this step. So now let's keep going. So now I want to determine concavity and inflection points. So this has to do with the second derivative and I abbreviated this, this part here, this means inflection point. Okay, so I need to set the second derivative equal to well, zero or determine where it does not exist. So we find that this does not exist at x equals zero, um, but we know this won't be an inflection point. Again, I'm just gonna remind myself, this is an asymptote, so it can't be a inflection point. But now, um, so I'm not going to have any inflection points, right? That's really what this means if this is the only possible one I found. So now I need to, once again, create a table for this, determine my um, concavity and all that. So I would recommend that you pause the video here. You determine the concavity on your own and make your conclusions. Hit play when you want to hear the, see the answer. So I'll draw the table. And so once again, I'm gonna omit the work of what test points I chose. I'm assuming you're an expert at this at this point. I've also got videos on this, so I will once again drop those in the description. But this will be, this first interval will be negative and this will be positive, which means this will be concave down, this will be concave up. And zero we know can't be an inflection point, so we just know the concavity, which we totally need to know for, um, anyways, for making the graph. Okay, great, so guess what? Now we finally have enough information to draw the graph. So now I can actually sketch the curve with any um, relevant points. So for this, um, I'm actually gonna give myself some more space here, so let me get a blank canvas. Now, if you have graph paper, that's great. Um, a lot of times when, when I was in calculus, I was just drew these by hand. Um, so I will just kind of show you how to do this if you don't have graph paper. So first you're gonna to wanna to set up your, your axes. Okay, so now this is where you take all the paper that you have so far and now you start kind of putting everything together. So the two relevant points that we found were the um, maximums and minimums. So I first wanna mark those. So I just approximated the, the max and min points that we found. Those were a couple slides back. Um, let's see, that was here, right? Here I talked about here was my local min, here was my local max. So I just went ahead and plotted those two points. The next thing that I wanna do, I wanna also put um, my, my oblique asymptote in here and my um, vertical asymptote. 
So I know that I have this vertical asymptote. I'm just going to draw this like solid line here so we can really clearly see it. So here was one asymptote, right? And then the other one was this oblique asymptote. So that's just going to be a line. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just sketch this line. Okay, so you actually can get quite a bit now with knowing the max and the min and having this oblique asymptote. So remember, if you go back to go back to this, um, if we kind of now review all the information that we have. So starting with this point here, so if I look at my my table from before, I know that going up to this point, I need to be increasing and then I need to turn and be decreasing. So here's one thing I know about this point. And then the other thing I know is that really on this side of the graph, the whole thing needs to be concave down. So if I just put all that information together, so here I am increasing, getting close to that asymptote. Here I am decreasing. And check it out, the whole thing is concave down, so we're good to go. And then if I do that with the other part of this, so now what do I do with this maximum here? And actually, let me let me draw this one more time. Um, there we go. That's much better. Much clearer that this is a local max. Okay, so now c coming to the other one, so now I need to be decreasing and then increasing once I hit this square root of negative 2. And on this side of the graph, the whole thing has to be concave up. So I'm going to be decreasing, increasing, and look, the whole little piece is concave up. So if you actually plug in this function, so what I would recommend actually, go to desmos.com if you don't have a graphing calculator, and just punch this in, and you're going to find that we're pretty darn close to what this actually looks like. Um, and Desmos is a really great way to check your, your answers, actually, and to just analyze your work. Um, I, I actually use it all the time. So um, this is kind of the idea behind these curves. So I have many more examples of this. This is just one, and I chose kind of an intentionally complicated example. But there's a lot of different things that can happen with graphs, so I'd highly recommend checking out some of the examples I have. Um, and they go a little bit faster than this, this video, so this is really laying out all the details and how complicated it can get. Okay, so I'll see you guys in the next video, hopefully. Thanks for watching, and again, consider giving this video a like if it was helpful to you. I'll see you next time.